What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to go over the storage adapter plugin in Payload CMS. We'll connect Vercel Blob, Cloudflare R2, and Upload Thing. Before we get started though, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and getting notifications so you never miss when I release a video about Payload CMS, Next.js, and more. If you'd like to see the code that I use in this video, there's a link to the repo in the description. Now, let's dive in. There are several ways to store your media uploads in Payload CMS. We'll cover three of the most common storage plugin adapters, Vercel Blob, AWS S3 using Cloudflare's R2, and Upload Thing. While we won't go over them, note that Azure and Google Cloud Storage, as well as your own custom configurations, are also available. One more note before we start configuring our storage plugins. When you install each adapter from Payload, make sure that the versions match in your package.json file. When you install anything from Payload, it automatically installs it at the latest version, not at a version matching your project. To avoid issues, either update all your payload dependencies to the latest version before starting this process, or make sure you change the version of each adapter as you install it and run pnpmi to install your desired version. In this video, we'll be using version 3.11, so I'll demonstrate how to install an older version of each adapter. Now, let's start with Vercel Blob. If you don't already have a Vercel account, you can go to vercel.com and sign up. I already have one, so I'm just going to log in to my projects. Again, if you don't have an account, go through all the setup process, including validating your email and log in to the platform. Once you're logged in, you'll see a top bar that starts with overview. If you need to scroll over until you see the storage selection and click on that, you can then create a database. So we'll select blob and which at the time of this recording is currently still in beta. This means that while it is stable enough to be used in production, breaking changes should be expected. So we'll hit create and then we're just going to name this test storage and we can hit create. We can then see that our test storage has been created under quick start. We can click on .env.local and copy the blob read write token snippet and post it into our projects.env file. So I will select that, copy the snippet, go over to my project, open my .env file, and then paste in the blob read write token. Now my read write token came with quotation marks, so I'm gonna delete those because those are not needed. After that, we'll need to install Payload CMS's Vercel Blob Storage Adapter by opening our terminal and using the command pnpm add at Payload CMS Storage Vercel Blob, just like that. Once that's installed, we can go over to our payload config and at the top of our file, add import Vercel blob storage from at payload CMS storage Vercel blob. We can then go down to our plugins array, which you may or may not already have initialized. If you don't, you do need to add this plugins array to use your storage adapter. Then we will add Vercel blob storage and we'll start configuring it from here. So we'll need to start with a few configuration options to get this set up. First, you can optionally set enabled to true. This defaults to true, so it's not really necessary unless you want to set it to false. If you like to explicitly state optional fields like I do, it makes sense to do this. Next, you'll want to set what collections are going to use Vercel Blob. So we'll type in collections and we'll add media and set that to true. If you have another collection that supports media uploads, you can add that collection as a new property and set it to true. But we only have media, so we'll leave it just like this. Lastly, you'll need to provide the token provided to you by Vercel by using the environment variable we set up. So we will do token process.env dot blob read write token. So now before we go to check if this works, we need to downgrade our storage Vercel blob because all payload packages need to be at the same level. So here we just change 3.18 to 3.11 and then we need to run pnpmi which will then install the version 3.11 for storage Vercel blob. So now we can run pnpm dev and then log in, go to our media, create new, 
select a file, and here we can upload whatever we want. So I hit save, and it says media successfully created. And now if we go over to our blob, we can actually see that the image shows up there. The next adapter we'll cover is the AWS S3 adapter, which is the one that I prefer. You can use any S3 storage adapter for this, but we'll use Cloudflare's generous free tier. If you don't already have a Cloudflare account, go ahead and create that, validate your account, and log in. I already have all of that, so I'm just going to take this tab, go to Cloudflare, and log in. After you log in and get to your account home, you'll find R2 object storage in the left sidebar, and you'll be brought to the R2 object storage overview page. You're gonna click Create Bucket, and name your bucket, which we'll just call test storage, and select your location. We're going to select automatic here, and then click create bucket. Once you do that, you'll be brought to a graphical interface where you can upload media directly to your bucket. Obviously, that's not what we're trying to do, so we want to connect this bucket to our payload CMS instant. To do that, click settings. You'll find your S3 API in the bucket details, which you'll want to copy and paste to your .env file. We'll call ours S3 endpoint and paste that in. You'll also want to take the name and store that in your .env file as S3 bucket. So we'll copy name S3 bucket. One thing that's not very clear is the region you need to use. For Cloudflare's R2, you'll use auto for your region not what's listed as the location. This isn't true for all S3 stores though. So if you're setting this up with AWS or another S3 storage, you'll want to see if you can find the region elsewhere. If you don't have a custom domain to set up, you'll want to enable the R2 dev subdomain for this bucket. You can do that by scrolling down to r2.dev subdomain and hit allow access. You'll then need to type in allow to allow that access. And then now you can use this bucket URL to serve media on your front end. While we won't render any images in this video, if you plan on using R2 and are still in development mode, I would recommend copying this into your environment variables for later use. Now that all of that is configured, we still need two bits of information, access key ID and secret access key. Those won't be on this screen. So we'll want to go back to our main screen for buckets, click API, then manage API tokens. After that, you'll want to create a new API token, set the necessary permissions, which in our case is object, read, and write, and we're only going to apply this to our test storage bucket. Once we do that, we can come down to the bottom and click create API token. And here we have our access key ID, which we'll click to copy and add in access key ID and we're prepending everything with S3 so we know what it is. And then we need the secret as well. And we'll copy and paste that over here. Once all your environment variables are set, we can now install the S3 storage adapter. In your command line, you'll need to run pnpm add at payload CMS storage S3 to install the adapter. We'll do that and then we'll come over to our package.json because once that's installed, you see here that the version is much higher than our current version. So we're going to set it to 3.11, run pnpmi and install the older version, then go over to payload config and comment out our Vercel blob storage. We'll then at the top of our page, import S3 storage from payload CMS slash storage S3. Come down to the bottom and add in S3 storage. Again, if you have multiple upload collections, you can select which collections you want this adapter to apply to. So we only have one collection, so we'll type in collections and just use media and set it to true. Next, we need to define our bucket. We added our bucket to the environment variables already, so we can add this by using process.env s3 bucket, and then in case it's undefined, we can pass in an empty string. We then need to create a config object, which takes credentials, which is another object where we're gonna have our access key ID and our secret access key. 
before we put those in underneath credentials, we're also going to add region, which we can just set to auto. You can put auto in an environment variable, but it's not exactly private information, so you can leave it there as a string. But for access key, we'll do process.env, and we'll have S3 access key ID or an empty string in case it's undefined. And then we'll do S3 secret and do the same thing if it's undefined, have an empty string. The last thing we'll add is specific to Cloudflare and may not be needed for all S3 configurations. Since the config option can be any S3 client config object, there are more options available to you that are dependent on your S3 setup. We copy and pasted our endpoint from our R2 bucket setup, which we can now use in the endpoint option in our S3 storage config like this. We'll do process.env, and then we have S3 endpoint or an empty string. And I just missed that comma up there. Once that's all set, you can then spin up your local environment. We'll come over to our media bucket. Once that loads, we can create new, select a file. We'll just drop the same thing in, hit save. And we see that media was successfully created. And if we go back to our R2 storage, we now see a new bucket created with new images created as well. The last adapter we'll look into is Upload Thing. Before we jump into that one, you should know that Upload Thing is currently in beta, so it may be stable, but you should expect breaking changes down the line as it comes out of beta. To get started, go to uploadthing.com and create a new account, validate your account, and sign in. Once you're logged into the dashboard, you can create a new app by clicking the red button. You can then name your app, which we will just use as test storage like we've been doing, and then select your plan. The free version should be enough to get you started, but you're not going to be able to change the region. Because of that, you may experience some latency if you're not in the US West 2 region. But for $10 a month, you can choose any region you want and set up granular access controls. We'll select free since I don't plan on using this for an actual project. Then we can click create app. So we'll scroll down, click create app. Once you're in your app, you can go to API keys in the sidebar. You'll be presented with your upload thing token, which you can copy to your .env file. You'll want to get rid of the beginning and end quotes if you have them in your token. So I'll hit copy. Go to our .env, paste, and remove the quote marks that were provided. Once you get your token into your project, we can then install the upload thing storage adapter by using pnpm add at payload CMS storage upload thing. Again, once this is installed, it comes in as the latest version of payload. So we will downgrade this to 3.11 and run pnpm i. And once that's done, we can come over, common out our S3 storage, go up to the top of our file, import upload thing storage from payload CMS storage upload thing, and then we will use upload thing storage and get our configurations set up there. Just like the other storage adapters, we need to set which collections should use this adapter by setting collections media true. So we'll set collections media True. Your media slug may be different, so be sure to use the slug of your upload collection that you created. Then you need to add an options object, which takes token, which is our process.env.uploadThing token, and we'll pass in an empty string if it's undefined. The options also take ACL, which defaults to public read, and this is optional, so you can leave this off since it defaults to public read. So I'll do that. Once your upload thing config is all set up, you should be able to start your local host by running pnpm dev, going back to our media, then create a new media upload, which we'll just use the same image, and hit save. Now it says media successfully created. We can go over to our upload thing, go to our files, and we now see the two sizes that we have configured uploaded to our upload thing storage. Now we've commented out all of our storage adapters for this example, but it is possible to use more than one storage adapter. 
For example, if you want one storage adapter for documents and another for images, you could use Upload Thing for a document collection and R2 for your media collection. So if you wanted to leave all three options enabled, you could do that by creating multiple upload collections and changing which collection each plugin is for. So we'll duplicate media and name it document. Change the slug to documents, export const document, then come over to our payload config, import documents from our collections, add it into our collections here, and then generate types and pull in our documents collection here. Now documents will be uploaded to upload thing and will need to be returned from them. In Cloudflare R2, if we enable that here, will then be just for our media collection here. There are even more ways to set up your storage plugins using Azure, Google, and even creating your own custom storage adapter. My preference, as I mentioned, is to use Cloudflare's R2 object storage, which has a very generous free tier and can connect to my Cloudflare domains with just a couple of clicks. If you found this video helpful, please like it and share the content with others who might find it useful as well. Check to make sure you're subscribed and getting notifications so you never miss when I upload a video about Payload CMS, Next.js, and more. If you have questions or suggestions, please drop them in the comments. Until then, I'll see you on the next one.